Welcome to Neon Cobra. Let's kick into it. Excellent. This is a how-to video on Azure reserved instancing. This is coming in line with the rest of the how-tos surrounding my cost management series I've been doing. So I'm going to bring you through the Azure portal. We're going to show you how to buy reservations. I'm going to tell you some tips and tricks and things you should be aware of as we go through this. Now, first off, though, is understanding what a reserved instance is and where you may want to use it. So a reserved instance or a reservation, also known as, is a one or three year term commit on compute within Azure. And this, as a result, will pass a 40 to 65% discount depending on the virtual machine chosen in the term commit. Now, this can either be paid monthly or entirely upfront, depending on your client's proclivity for payment, whether they want, you know, CapEx or OpEx. And the idea is you see a heavy reduction in your overall Azure cost by doing so. Now, as an MSP, one thing to be made aware of is you forego any margin when you buy this. So if you're receiving a percentage based back from any distributor, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12%, whatever the case is, when you lock in a reserved instance, you go down to 0% margin. Now, the exceptions to this rule is if you have a Seleucid designation under infrastructure for Azure in the new Microsoft Cloud AI Partner Program, or also known as MCAIPP. If you have that unlocked, you will receive 10% in rebates on the back end. So not margin, but additional incentives and rebates through Microsoft's Partner Center. So when we're taking this into account, when you're rolling this out, it's important to understand that while you're reducing your overall cost for your client, you're actually reducing your profitability as well. So if you're an organization that spends their time getting their margin through other avenues, this is not a big deal. But if you're reliant on that small piece that Microsoft passes over, you need to be aware you will be giving that up. In fact, you're getting hit twice. Not only are you losing 60, you know, 40%, to 60% of your actual cost by discounting it, you will lose an addition the remaining amount of whatever's left over because you're not receiving any margin. Other things to be aware of with reservations is the cancellation terms. So unlike savings plans, there are cancellation policies in play for reservations. At this time, May 6, 2025, there currently is no cancellation penalty for early term removal. They are reserving the right to charge 12% of the remaining term, however. So this has been in the documentation for years now, at least seven, eight years since I've been looking at it, and it still isn't in effect. But I do recommend as an MSP, you put this in your cancellation contract. So in the event of a client departure, you have the option to charge the 12% if the fees have come into play, or perhaps waive them under good faith in hopes to retain or maybe win a client back in the future. The second item to be aware of with cancellation policies is there is a rolling $50,000 a year USD window on canceled policies. So if you cancel enough reservations that the entire refunded amount is greater than $50,000, Microsoft will not refund the remaining balance. So let's say I canceled $50,000 worth, the next reservation that goes for cancellation above that 50,000 on a rolling window, I would be on the hook for, even though it's no longer present on the account. More often than not, an MSP will not run into this issue. However, if you're transacting in, say, SQL database re reservations around the vCore model, that can get very costly very quickly. And that's a way, if you're swapping them in and out, where you could get hit for this sort of item. So it's very important to kind of keep an eye on that. So with that in mind, as always, we're going to hop into the Azure portal. So on your general landing screen, the easiest way to get to it is searching from the top and search for reservations. Now, there are a few ways to get here. Your Azure advisor may have direct click-throughs based on its cost savings recommendations. Some virtual machines will also have the ability for reservations within the settings panel, but this is generally the more um, easiest way to get into it, the more common way. Now, if you have a distributor that has self-serve reservations, you may see this screen here. Occasionally, you'll have a notice that it is not a supported function, and depending on that, your distributor may have to action them for you. But with Pax8, we've got a self-serve reservation set up. So what you would see here is either your purchased reservations or an empty page ready to be purchased. Now, there, if you're not seeing that, it could also be as a result of role assignments. So same as how there's global administrator and then subscription permissions or RBAC, there are role assignments assigned for reservations. So even if you have owner and global admin, you may not necessarily have access to this window. 
Now you can do your intra elevation, your user access assignment, like you would to take over an Azure subscription to see what's going on in here and assign yourself the appropriate credentials. So assuming all the credentials are in play, if you have active reservations, you will see them here. Now we're gonna swing back to this in a little bit because I do wanna show you what it looks like in some different info. But right now we're gonna talk about purchasing. So when you choose add, these are the different reservations you can bring into play. As mentioned, the more common ones would be your virtual machines. Now you may see some for managed disks as well. Those tend to start at one terabyte premium SSDs and the savings is actually less than your baseline margin you would get. So unless you're really trying to drive costing down, it almost doesn't make sense to do those reserved instances for one terabyte drives because you actually lose money as an MSP by doing that. Anyways, once you've selected virtual machines, it's gonna pull from the advisor data. And that's what we're seeing here. My Azure advisor is making recommendations based on the last 30 days worth of usage. This is what it sees and then recommends as a result to lock these in. It will take general uh, guidelines based on whether the machine's been on for this entire time. It doesn't get very specific as whether it'd be, you know, if it's been powered on and off a couple times, is it more active than say, and more cost effective just to scale it. So generally it'll just say if it's been active, most times this is fairly accurate. Now things to understand when you're looking at this page. When you're determining or trying to determine whether the lock in a reserved instance, you need to make sure that A, you're not scaling it more than 300 or 350 hours a month. If you're keeping the system offline for more than 350 hours a month, it's more cost effective to scale. That's generally the break even point is, is 350 hours. There's some wiggle room in there. Additionally, if you've just recently done savings plans, this data could be stale. It would take another 30 days from your savings plans to update this information to provide the appropriate recommendations. So it's always best to double check under your virtual machine window to ensure what you're looking at is relevant. So assuming we do not see the ones we need in here, you can select all products. And this is gonna pull the entire catalog in all the regions. So the first thing I, I recommend you work on these blue bubbles here. We would start with the region. So let's just say Canada Central. And if there's any recommendations, you'll have those little blue advisor bubbles next to it. You choose your term. You have your options of one year and three year. Now there are certain five year reservations for, but more often than not, you'll be looking at one or three year. This is how you determine your discounts and your terms. And then you have your billing frequency. Would you buy the monthly or upfront? So once you have this information selected, you will search for the VM in question. So we'll say a D4S and we'll choose one of the new V6s. When you click on it, it's gonna generate the current price. So I'll pause here for a moment to understand what this is. This is essentially removing the consumption cost and replacing it with this fixed fee per month. Now this price can change based on the current rates that Microsoft is charging for the reserved instances. In the US, more often than not, your pricing will remain the same. However, discounts can vary based on the usage of those machines. So if you have a very sought after series like a B series, your reservation discounts might be much less than say a D series where there's plenty of capacity to go around. So when you're going and you're quoting, you may need to refresh your numbers depending on capacity and usage in the region. Now, anybody outside of the US is also subject to exchange rate fluctuation. So I'm in a US tenant right now, but in the Canadian tenant, when you add this, it will show your Canadian pricing at that point. And that's important because while you may have quoted, our dollar might've been 130 last time you quoted, it could be $1.40 uh, to the dollar, which means your reservation cost may be a little bit different. Either way, the savings is substantial. So it's something usually you don't wanna sleep on. Once you add those in, you will choose add and you'll see in the background, the cart get filled out and then you choose view cart. Here you can rename your reservation. So it generally shows your provisioning date and time, which is great. Uh, you can change this to maybe assign it directly to a virtual machine name if desired. You can choose to auto renew or not. And same on that pricing. If the auto renewal, there's a price change, it'll pull the new price moving forward. It doesn't maintain that existing price. You choose your scope, which we'll talk about in a moment. Change your billing frequency, change your or your quantity. And then you would choose review and buy and provision. And that's it. Self-service reservations will generally within the hour be active. And then they will appear in this page here. So a couple things to focus on on this page. This is already provisioned reservations. So obviously we have the name. 
We have when it was when it's set to expire, the scope, which we'll talk about, the type of, of um, reservation, the product it's covering, the region it's covering, and whether it's set to auto anew. There's also these last days utilization, last seven days utilization. These are important to understand. This is essentially, is the reservation working or not? If you get the right virtual machine, but the wrong region, you're not getting the discounts and savings. In fact, you're paying more. You're paying for reservations that's not being utilized. So seeing 100% utilization means nothing's being shut down in the environment. This reservation, as a result, is covering the virtual machine at 100% of the time. Now, when you first deploy this, it can take up to 24 hours for this data to show up. So if I buy this and come back in an hour and it's not looking right, don't worry. Give it a little time. If you're seeing that this is maybe at 60%, what could be happening is you might have numerous virtual machines and it's only able to cover 60% of them, which may mean you need to buy another one. And you can actually see the particular resource group and the resource name that this is trying to cover. So if you're seeing it bounce between numerous uh, virtual machines, you'll see what it's been protecting at this time. And that leans well into my next section as far as scope. So you have the option to configure this virtual machine for various scopes. Shared means anything in the environment that fits this criteria, it'll attempt to discount. Uh, single subscriber we'll scope over management group because it's not generally available in CSP. It's more of an enterprise thing for now. But single subscription, if I have multiple subscriptions in my department and my environment. So let's say I've got a finance, I've got a dev, I've got production, whatever the case is. I can take my reservations and put them to a specific, specific subscription and then build that through to the appropriate department. I can also make sure that, say, my devs don't accidentally steal some of the pricing discounts that maybe finance has enrolled into. This is really good when you're using savings plans in conjunction as well, because you can even get right down to the specific resource group. It's got a single organization. You've got baseline systems that don't move, but you've also got a dev environment that may sometimes use some of that those same instances, and you don't want them to, you know, to accidentally be covering dev instances. You can have single resource restriction, essentially say, only protect this resource group as an example. So you can be very granular with it. Now, instance size flexibility is essentially saying if it matches in the general family, so in this case, B series in Canada East region, then protect the instance. So generally you'd buy a B2 MS for a B2 MS. But if I have a B4 MS, I could use one B2 MS to discount it by 50%. So do a 50% coverage of the VM costs, or I could use two B2 MS to equivalent to one B4 MS. So this is okay if you're trying to maybe upgrade systems and you're maybe like tacking on reservations to kind of equate up to the number or the size you need. But more often than not, especially with their cancellation and the exchange rights you have, you would normally just swap out whatever for what you want to use and restart your term. Your renewal options in here, again, this is, you can toggle it on or off. If you decided during the checkout process, you did want to change this, you can come in here. Now, the last item to be made aware of, there is an exchange mechanism and a cancellation mechanism. Both cancel the reservation, and but the exchange will start a new term with whatever you choose moving forward. Now, unfortunately, self-service reservation in CSP does not allow that to happen at the CSP level. So this is generally something you'd want to submit a service request to, to have them either cancel or swap out for the new one. Generally, we would require written consent just to keep track so we're not accidentally canceling because what this does is it does start a new three-year term. So if I were to do this today, my renewal date wouldn't be 2026. It'd be 2028 if I did a three-year as an example. So these are just things to be aware of when you're working with reservations. It's fairly straightforward to get them in play. The general nuance of returning and exchanging and stuff is more support oriented, but long and short, you'd get these items locked in and you'd start seeing immediate savings on the account. A final rule I'd like to put in play, buy these as close to the start of the month as possible. These are not prorated SKUs. So the sooner you get them into play, the less of a shock it's going to be to your client, right? If I buy something, on the fifth of the month, I will have to pay for the first five days at the full pay-as-you-go rates, and then there'll be a full reservation charge on the fifth, and then I'll show up on the next invoice. Not too bad. But if it's the 25th of the month, they're essentially paying for an entire month's worth of usage and then a full reserved instance because it'll protect the last five days. Now, the reasoning behind this is at the end of your three-year term, you'll get the first 25 days of that month essentially included. You don't pay for it because the reservation was paid for 
essentially on the front end. Hard to justify when you're trying to save money. I recommend trying to line these up with as close as you can to the start of the month to really overall increase your client satisfaction. So that does it. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Please like and subscribe to content on YouTube. Interact with me on LinkedIn and YouTube as well. Anything else you want to see, just let me know. And with that, we'll catch you next time.